Hello. I'm just putting the finishing touches on a red dress to put in my window. I'm also wearing red. Some people today will put art like this in their windows and wear red because they want to honor our stolen sisters. We want to make the world a place where indigenous women and girls are safe and don't have to be scared. Today, I want to share with you some of my favorite books written and illustrated by, with, or about indigenous women and girls. My Heart Fills with Happiness Written by Monique Gray Smith Illustrations by Julie Flett This book about the simple things that bring us joy is one of my favorite books to read at story time. It's full of the things we feel, smell, hear, and do together that bring us joy. Mama, do you love me? Written by Barbara M. Juicy, illustrated by Barbara Lavallee. The illustration shows some traditions, foods, and clothing of women and girls from the Northwest Coast. Little One wants to know if her mama will always love her. Little One may do some things that make her mama angry, sad, or scared, but the answer is yes. Mama will always love Little One, no matter what. Sometimes I Feel Like a Fox Written and illustrated by Danielle Daniel Do you ever feel like an animal? This beautiful book talks about feelings, our identity, and how we care for ourselves and others. Danielle Daniel also included a list of the totem animals in the book. She says they represent the positive character traits of the animals children may be familiar with. Birdsong, written and illustrated by Julie Flett. Have you ever moved to a new place and made a new friend? Katharina moves with her mom to a new place far from her old home. She meets Agnes, an older neighbor who shares her love of art and nature. When Agnes gets sick, Katharina brings art and nature inside for her. Agnes tells Katharina the bird paintings are a poem for her heart. What's My Superpower? Written by Eviak Johnston and illustrated by Tim Mack. Nelvana loves where she lives. She also loves her talented friends and encourages them by telling them they have superpowers. Nelvana is worried she will never find her own superpower. But her mama sees how special she is and helps her understand what her superpower is. When I Was Eight Written by Christy Jordan Fenton and Margaret Pokiak Fenton Illustrated by Gabrielle Grimmard Olaman has to leave her home to go to a faraway school where she is treated very badly by the people who are supposed to take care of her. She feels lonely and afraid. But when Olimon remembers who she is and the people she comes from, she realizes she is brave, clever, and that she can read. Then she is able to stand up to the bully and feel good about herself. I Am Not a Number Written by Jenny K. Dupuy and Kathy Kaser Illustrated by Jillian Newland in this book for older kids, Irene is taken from her family and harshly punished at school for speaking her language. When she finally goes home in the summer, she has nightmares about what happened to her at school and is afraid to return. She and her brothers hide from the Indian agent when he comes for them, and they are able to stay at home. 
I Am Not a Number also includes a short history of the residential school system. The Water Walker, written and illustrated by Joanne Robertson. This story is about Nokomis Josephine Mandamin. Nokomis means grandmother in Ojibwe, and Nibi means water. Nokomis loved Nibi, and Nibi loved Nokomis. Nokomis saw how people were disrespecting the water and wondered how she could protect it. She and the Mother Earth Water Walkers walked all around all of the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River. They prayed and sang for the water until many more people joined them. There is still so much more to do. Nokomis wondered, what are you going to do about it? Nibi's Water Song, written by Sunshine Tenasco, illustrated by Chief Ladybird. Nibi is very thirsty, but the water that comes out of her faucet is dirty. The water in the river is sticky. Only one woman in town will give Nibi water, and it is not enough. Nibi keeps looking for clean water and cannot find it. She sings and dances for clean water until her friends join her and get everyone to work together. Now, Nibi is no longer thirsty. Nibi is happy. Here are some more books I love about indigenous children and families. When We Were Alone, written by David A. Robertson, illustrated by Julie Flett. A child asks her grandmother many questions. This is a book about sadness and hope. Fry Bread, a Native American family story, written by Kevin Noble Millard, illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. This is a book about food, family, history, and identity. May We Have Enough to Share, written by Richard Van Camp, with photographs by T and Bannock, and beaded artwork by Carolyn Bletchard. This is a book about gratitude, healing, and joy. You Hold Me Up, written by Monique Gray Smith, illustrated by Danielle Daniel. How do we respect each other? How do we care? How do we help? One of the ways we can hold each other up is by listening. When we don't know how to start helping someone, listening to their stories is a very good place to start. If you have any questions about these books, there are resources, more books, and art projects all linked below this video. Ask an adult you trust to help you. There's also a link to The Red Dress Project by Jamie Black, and she gives the pattern that I use to make this red dress. Maybe you can make a red dress of your own for your window. <laughs>